So a lot of stuff is still going on around the Big Ten. Gavin Newsom wants an explanation from USC over in California. Notre Dame is apparently negotiating an even newer, updated, bigger money deal with NBC for their broadcast rights. But with all that going on around the Big Ten, I think that means that the dust may be settling on what the conference will be doing this offseason in terms of realignment. You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Listening into Locked On Big Ten alongside Matt Sheehan, I'm Nate Dickinson. Thank you, as always, for making us your first listen every weekday. It's three times a week, at least here during the off season. We're about oh, uh, 10 days away from being back on the full-time schedule when August gets back in, Matt. But it'll Jesus. be football season then. It'll be football season then. we got plenty to do to start previewing that. But we're going with some more off-the-field stuff. This has been popular in this off season here with stuff going on around the Big Ten. Uh, let's start off with some notes made on in regards to your team, Michigan State. Matt hosts the Locked on Spartans podcast, of course. And a bit of a stray taken by Michigan State kind of out of nowhere at AC sure. days. Uh, it was Pitt coach Pat Narduzzi came out and said if uh, not only Kenny Pickett had been in that game, Pitt would have won. But even if just the backup had made it to the end of the game, Pitt would have won that game. Down the Big Ten in general kind of two, not seeing really the hype and what Big sure. Ten football is right now. But uh, uh, let's start with the uh, MSU slander first. Your take. <laughs> Uh, my take was confusion. Like, Pat, I-, I thought we were friends, man. Come on. You used to be our defensive coordinator for Lord knows how many years. You know, you coached that wonderful Cotton Bowl victory the year prior, that amazing Rose Bowl victory. So, yeah, I thought, you know, we were on good terms. I- Listen, I don't know if he's maybe miffed at Michigan State because he never really got that interview after D'Antonio left. Or maybe he's not miffed at all. Maybe this is just who he is as a guy. And hey, good on you, Pat Narduzzi. Now, I will say this. Spartan fans, turn uh, your your speaker down, turn your headphones down. He, he's not wrong about the Kenny Pickett stuff. He, he's not wrong at all. Like we, we had the worst <laughs> pass defense, arguably, in the nation last year. And, yeah, I think a guy like Pen- Kenny Pickett maybe could have carved us up a little bit. Now, okay, Spartan fans can turn your radios back up, your speakers back up, or whatever back up, because, hey, we didn't have Kenneth Walker in that game either. And I think that would have uh, bit off some of the points that Pat Narduzzi was talking about. I think what he said that Kenny Pickett's a 21 point swing yeah. or whatever. Uh, sure. Well, whatever it is, that's fine. Or also Pat, we could also talk about this as well. How about just protecting a two possession lead with eight minutes to go in the game? That kind of seems like a coaching thing, doesn't it? So I, I digress. If they want to, you know, make t-shirts that say would have won the peach bowl with Kenny Pickett in it. I'm not going to complain. Sure, that sounds like a fun little cute story they can do over there. But, yeah, I was a little confused. But also more so like, ooh, bad. We're feeling ourselves, aren't we? Love this. Love that uh, presentation at media days. You know, no coach speaks there. That was uh, that was authentic and raw, and that's what we want our coaches to be. So I'm sure Pitt fans loved it. Us state fans kind of love it. I mean, it's it's good banter. I, I, I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, it was Pitt was up 21 to 10 going into the fourth quarter of that game, See? Michigan yeah. State. <laughs> scores 21 unanswered and ends up winning the football game of course i, I don't know if it That's was works. yeah i don't know if it was much a, a shot at michigan state if it was is the big 10 because like it seemed like when you sure. read the quotes like uh, the point he was getting to in saying that they would have beat michigan state was that he doesn't get all the hype about like jumping to the big 10 or that the big 10 is some sort of super conference and takes some sort of big mm-hmm. leap up i, I mean Maybe that that's just kind of the ACC's forced stance right now at ACC media days. But uh, yeah, I, I took it not only as just a shot randomly at Michigan State, a school, as you pointed out, he knows well. Uh, I think yeah. it was a shot just at the conference as a whole, too. Yeah, like when you add that context in, like it makes a little more sense, I suppose. And of course, you know, that's what the ACC stance has to be, right? That like, no, we are better than the Big Ten. And sure, yeah, we just lost to them in a New Year's Six Bowl, but would have been different had our starting quarterback played that game or our second string quarterback was able to go on the rest of the game. I think he got hurt. It was either that first drive or second drive. So yeah, they had to play their third string quarterback. Now, listen, I'm not going to, you know, 
talk the semantics or the uh, analytics about what their backup quarterback could have done that game because I don't know. I, I have no idea. Yeah, maybe they could have won. Maybe they did. In fact, the matter is, like, ideally you want to hold an 11-point lead as you go into the fourth quarter here. Um, I, whatever. I mean, it, it is what it is. Like I said, it, it, like, I'm not punching the air over here. Like, I'm not reading the Narduzzi quotes and being like, oh, F him. Like, I, I think it's more so fun. I don't speak for every MSU fan. I think some kind of took it personal. But, like, I'm like, ah, you know what? Hey, finally, media day stuff we can actually talk about. That isn't, you know, just all about expansion or who's going to join what conference and yada, yada, yada. Or, you know, just every coach talking about how their team's going to win their conference. Like, shout out to the Vanderbilt coach really quick, by the way. I don't know if you saw that quote, but he said, we know that Vanderbilt will be the best football program in the country in due time. Like th- I'll have what he's having. I, that's okay. I'm, I'm all for confidence, but oh, whoo, that's, that might be a bridge too far. That, that to me, was even more outlandish than anything Pat Narduzzi said. So that's, yeah, that's what it is. We're having fun at media days. Uh, finally. It's fun. I mean, in due time, yeah, that that's, he's not wrong. He's in due, I, I, listen, I, that's the yeah, thing. If, if, if it's in due time, he's not, he can never be wrong. <laughs> he can't be yeah and like let's say you know world war three finally happens and you know so, some schools get taken out right and then it's just it's all ash in the entire country but just nashville and vanderbilt's the only one standing that could be their best shot to be the best team in the country if they're the only one standing after some insane insane news but uh wow in due time yeah i guess 3033 is a good benchmark to hit if if everything does stay intact i don't know man it's uh it's wild times in media days it's wild times uh just in general so who Nate, who's to say? Who's to say? Who's to say? He can also never be right, but it just, by the nature of the wording, he, he will never be wrong, technically. It yeah. always will be in due time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just got to wait a little bit, maybe a few centuries, but hey, you know what? Let's go. go. Anchor down. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's talk a little bit of expansion talk here. Uh, coming out of California, Governor Gavin Newsom said yeah. yesterday in what was pretty much all of the headlines when I did my daily search of just Big Ten into Google News to look sure. and see what stuff I may be missing. But it was all about Gavin Newsom really just saying that he needs an explanation from UCLA on moving to the Big Ten, which wouldn't matter if he wasn't a part of this board that makes votes and UCLA is a public school. From my reading, I understand that board can't actually force UCLA to reverse the decision and not go to the Big Ten Conference. But there Mm -hmm. was discussion about potentially UCLA having to pay some sort of exit fee to Cal, which is the the, the other public school in the Pac-12 and in the state of California too, obviously. But that or possibly even worse for UCLA, sharing some of that media rights revenue with Cal since it's all publicly funded. Now, again, Newsom can't actually make UCLA leave, but Mm -hmm. it's been well documented right now that UCLA needs that money. I'm having a hard time trying to wrap my head around whether or not this matters at all, because everything is still pointing toward there's going to be so much money to throw around once this media rights deal gets done that none of this is going to matter. Yeah, right. Like, you know, Newsom wants the explanation. And I, I wrote down detailed notes right here, actually, on this card. If you're listening to the podcast, this doesn't make sense. But here, I'll just show it, it's it's M-O-N-E-Y, Nate. That's the that's the reason. Money. Like, okay, you want to throw us an exit fee? Like, name your price. Like, as long as it isn't like in the billions, like, okay, well, gladly pay it. Now, that is a fascinating, fascinating caveat if they actually do have to revenue share, oddly enough, with the other state schools, even though well, clearly they're not in the Big Ten. So like that. If that happens, like that will be a fascinating wrinkle and that might, you know, cause a hiccup here or there. But just like you said, like how much can they actually really do? How much of this is just uh, not not political theater all the way as we know it, but, you know, political sketch comedy, if you will. I just to step below that, like you got to go through all the the checks and balances, go through the list, you know, governor's got to act. Oh, angry. Even though I can't do anything, but it it is what it is. I mean, they're, they're gone. I'm sorry. to everyone that's upset that just be, be better have a better conference i don't know what you want me to say <laughs> it's, it's very mean yeah. but it's true <laughs> yeah I, I mean the the point he put out is that it's a public school the responsibility is to the public and the students yeah. first so i think it was they'll have they'll have to he said prove that this is beneficial to students and student athletes and uh, uh, yeah. how that's going to make that jump I, again i Again, he can't make him not go. So at the end right. of the day, 
I'm still very much on the side of, again, once the bag comes in, none of this, all of this is going to be such minuscule numbers compared to what everyone else is pouring out. Again, if, if it's some sort of share of money, then maybe that gets a little hairy for UCLA. But I yeah. still think that ends up being a minor problem in what is end up, what is going to be just a, a huge success in this move for UCLA and USC to come to the Big Ten. I, I don't see any way that that isn't the case. J just because, I mean, and it can't be. Yeah, it, it's it's just a blip on the radar. It's just another step that they have to take to make this final by, you know, whenever UCLA joins, whether that is 2024, 2025, or hey, 2023, let's get this thing sped up. I don't know. We've seen crazy things like that happen before. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, so, sorry, California. You, they, you have beautiful weather over there. You, what, you know, okay, let's let's relax everyone in California. Like all 17 people that are probably upset about this uh, in that you know side of the country. But like, hey, life is good enough for you over there. Like, let's just ha just let us take your teams peacefully, please. If, if I could just lock that out there, I'm sure that'll fix everything. I think I just solved it, Nate. How about that? <laughs> We're going to talk about another team that uh, maybe coming to the Big Ten, has been rumored to be coming to the Big Ten, but uh, with recent yeah. news, it may very well just be staying put with where it is. That's coming up in a second. But first, Built Bar, if you've been listening to our show, if you've been listening to Matt's show, you know what Built Bar is by now. It's the candy or protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, looks like a candy bar. And they've got these new puffs out now too, where instead of the chocolate around protein bar, it's the chocolate around marshmallow. And they've, of course, I'm sure you've heard by now, Matt have the new Konkura Brownie Chunk Puff. Apparently one of their most popular flavors in the regular Built Bar. Now they put so it into good. a marshmallow with the chocolate around it. You're a Built Bar fan, Matt. You've been showing us visually here if you watch the YouTube and subscribe Massive. to the YouTube. But you are a huge Built Bar fan, I know. As I, as, as I keep telling people when we do these, it's like we get sponsors that are good, but oh, like yeah. nobody in the network itself, just like in conversation talks about how much they like the built bars or how much they like the products as much as people like built bars. No doubt about it. like, I had people come up to me like, you know, just because you know, that Hawk built bar, like, Hey, built bar actually that good. A hundred percent. It is. I will tell you off camera, off microphone, built bar absolutely slaps. We got a shipment sent over here to the Sheehan household. They had built puff s'mores, built puff cookie dough chunk. I had two of them just right off the bat. They taste better than a candy bar. In my opinion, built puffs and built bars slap, Nate, slap, slap. Try out the new built puffs. Try it out in the new flavored coconut brownie chunk. One of the most popular so built bar good. flavors. And when you head on over to built.com, of course, use the code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. That's built.com, LOCKED15 for 15% off the order. All right. Let's talk about someone who doesn't need 15% off, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. That no. school, <laughs> great transitions, right? Um, that was that school, Yeah, that was great. That school has been, since USC and UCLA moved to the Big Ten, Target number one for this conference, as it has yeah. been probably before you see, you see and you CLA made that move. But Notre Dame has always been able to be self-sufficient, mainly because of the football deal that they have with NBC. And news coming out here, it was less than a day ago, I believe, that there are negotiations with NBC to up that deal to what could be the number I saw, potentially $75 million per season. And again, Ooh. that's only football money. Notre Dame's still wow. getting a share of the ACC money for every other sport with it too. That puts Notre Dame at or above everything the Big Ten's doing. The only, only real strong argument I was able to put together in my head was that Notre Dame would need the money at some point or would at some point the money become so big that they couldn't ignore it anymore. That doesn't seem to be the case. It feels like NBC is perfectly happy playing ball with all of these high-end media rights for entire conferences in just holding on to Notre Dame. That, that, wow, 75 million. Yeah. Okay. If, if that's what we're talking about, then yeah, it was already increasingly seemingly unlikely that Notre Dame would join this conference as the days went on. Yes. When UCLA and USC joined the big 10, like I, I thought it'd be a pretty good chance that Notre Dame was finally for once and for all, going to jump ship from being Mr. Independent and joining the Big Ten family. But, but wow, $75 million, that's, uh, 
that's a lot of coin because what we're, we're looking at a big 10 media rights deal that could exceed $1 billion. Once you divide that up by the 16 teams, like I, I think that comes up a, a bit short of the 75 million mark. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing some Spartan math right there, but I, I think it's not going to compete with what Notre Dame has. And yeah, if it's just for football, like you said, like, okay, kind of ends all conversation, doesn't it? I mean, there is one, one thing that you could throw out there to maybe entice them. And I don't think that it's going to be enough is that, well, Hey, if you join the big 10, if you join the sec, for example, like this is your best shot to make it to the college football playoff. I don't even know if that's necessarily true though, because you know, they could still do what they do, make their own schedules, still go 11 and one, 12 and zero, and it's going to be enough to make a college football playoff probably more years than not. I would imagine. So I don't even know if that's a viable argument at, at this point. So I think, once again, for the, oh, I want to say 12th time in the last 30 years, the conversation of Notre Dame joining the Big Ten, case open, case closed. We'll, we'll see you all again in four years to have this conversation, I imagine, because um, it's death, taxes, and talk about Notre Dame joining the Big Ten and only for them to not actually do it. So thank, thank you for what you do in Notre Dame. You got the attention you were looking for, as you do once every Olympic cycle, seemingly, so. They just can't stop winning in, in, in the news headline making department. Nate. You, you point out that we've been on this ride before. And oh, yeah, many it, times. Of course, yeah. if you're a Big Ten fan, then you're hesitant to say that Notre Dame would come to the Big Ten, even if the, the scenarios that I laid out were the case. Yeah. They don't want to. They, they want to stay an independent, at the very least, football program. I, yeah. I don't think, I guess then you said it. If it ends up being a competitive thing where right. it ends up being you have to be in a conference that's the SEC or the Big Ten to make the college football playoff, which mm-hmm. could very well be the case down the road. That's not something that's happening right away, of course. Notre Dame still feels perfectly happy picking their own schedule and trying to build up a college football resume that way. It's worked for them in the past. So it's not unfeasible that it wouldn't keep working i do think that the book is closed now if they're going into mm-hmm. these deals with nbc or even going into negotiate negotiations i think at least for this year then we're done talking about it which i do think and i'm interested to hear what you think too means that the big 10 is done at least for this year too which i was leaning anywho but i think that again Notre Dame is the domino that has to fall before anything else. And I think this is that domino falling on the side of no. I I think you're bang on with that. Yeah. I think it was either going to be Notre Dame or no one else or Notre Dame and a friend. I don't think it was going to be two other teams. Like, you know, it was, everyone had their theories, right? Like, Oh, Washington, Oregon could be next or, Oh, Stanford and uh, Oregon could be next, for example, or, uh, Hey, let's uh, get North Carolina out of the ACC and then we'll borrow Stanford from the, I mean, yeah, it's, it all comes down to Notre Dame and the, the dust is kind of settled for now. The only thing that can reopen this book, I think, for Notre Dame to uh, join the Big Ten is, you know, okay, a, a media rights deal expires, but, you know, Big Ten is about to lock theirs up for X amount of years. Or I think what would be interesting, too, and this goes back to the, oh, can they make the college football playoff as an independent argument? is if we ever get to just four big conferences, right? Because the Big 12 is kind of, you know, still there. They're going to be a fun conference. They are a Power 5 conference still. Pac-12 hanging on. They're still a Power 5 conference. ACC, they're obviously still a Power 5 conference. So you have five conferences, okay? Like, so there's no set in stone. All right, let's take the best four teams from all four conferences. And there's our college football playoffs. So I, if there's ever a merger between any of those outlying conferences, then maybe Notre Dame will feel pressure. But again, it's money, man. M- money talks. And if uh, NBC is throwing you $75 million, like, I, do you even care <laughs> at that point? <laughs> do you even care? And really, is the college football playoff even going to say, like, oh, Notre Dame they had a really good year. We got to make sure we keep the Irish out, though, so we can uh, have Arizona State, who just won the Pac-12. Uh, in the, oh, come on, let's, let's be adults about this. I, it still might not even be enough. So it's just very minuscule percentage. But, yeah, that's, that's all I got for you. I mean, whew, man. Hey. It, I mean, it, it was after a pandemic It is while you're seeing everybody else get all sorts of money, but maybe it was still a little bit foolish of me to think that Notre Dame of all schools would yeah. be struggling to cash the checks and all sorts of things like that. So if it's not going to be a money thing, which it seems like now, 
is not and will not ever still be a problem for Notre Dame. It's going to have to be some sort of thing that affects the competitive nature on the field and the ability yeah. to compete at a national stage, which so far through the BCS, through the start of this college football playoff, Notre Dame has been able to survive and thrive doing its own yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. I mean, they're not going to slow down anytime soon. Marcus Freeman's got a great recruiting class going on down in South Bend as well. But yeah, it's <sighs> fool me once, uh, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me like for the 13th time as I really thought that this would be finally the time Notre Dame joined a conference. I don't even know what to say. I guess I'm just a big clown, but uh, I will do it all over again in four to five years probably. I will not learn from my previous mistakes. I will uh, think that Notre Dame will join a conference probably in yeah, 2027 sounds about right. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, every lesson I learned will be out of my memory bank by then. Can't wait for it, Nate. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah, it, it, it'll be, it'll have to be again, a change to the college football landscape. Yeah. But again, I think maybe the best way to put it is this is easily the closest we've gotten to Notre Dame joining yeah. a conference and still easily very far away from Notre Dame actually joining a conference, but still right. it's changing. And I think it's not going to stop trending toward a Notre Dame team having to join a conference at some point, but again, it's going to have to show up on the field because the off the field stuff, Notre Dame's got covered. No doubt about it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. No doubt about it. Yep. NBC money talks that, that peacock money talks, Nate. So, <laughs> woo. Wow. Good. Good on you, Irish. Go, go get him, I guess. So I, I mean, I guess we think then we're done adding teams for now. It'll be 14 Big Ten teams for this season. I, you mentioned before, I would not be surprised to see if uh, USC and UCLA can get out of the deal with the Pac-12 yeah. even sooner than the projected. It, it was 24, 25, I think, the year that they're supposed to get in up. here. But anywho, yeah, I, I would see them trying to get back up there. But I think this is what the Big Ten looks like, at least for the immediate future. Yeah, so – uh, I, I, yeah, I guess that's it. But yeah, I think that there is a small percentage though for its next year. Maybe it's just a 10% percentage, but yeah, I, I, I think that um, there, there always is going to be that outline chance that it could be next year. I don't know. Stay tuned and stay tuned when the big 10 finally gets rid of divisions too. I cannot wait for that as right. well, whether that is 2023 or we got to wait till 2024. So that's a nice little under a uh, nice little undercard story right there for us, big 10 fans in this whole chaos. So, wow. What a fun summer, Nate, man. Yeah, it's been an eventful summer for sure. It's been uh, fun. It's been fun. Matt Sheehan's the host of Locked on Spartans every single weekday during the season, at least three times a week during these summer months when the kids are away from school. He'll be back on the show, well, again, three times next week as he has been this week. What's been going on over at Locked on Spartans? Well, well uh, we got to rip Pat or a new one on Monday. No doubt about that. But no, it's, uh, you know what? We had so much fun with recruiting in June for official visits. And now those kids aren't actually picking Michigan state. So it's kind of really gone south here, but uh, we're trying to keep a smile on our face, Nate, because well, uh, you got to get through the summer somehow. And uh, if it's not going to be uh, the good decisions of 17 and 18 year old children, um, it, it's got to be something else. So we like to mix it up with some mailbag questions here. So that's, Games just need to start, Nate. That, that's what needs to happen. <laughs> They're coming. I'm dying coming. over here. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Shane's the host of Locked on Spartans. He's with you again at least three times a week if you want to stay up to date on everything going on in the offseason up at East yeah. Lansing. Matt, thanks as always for joining on the program. This has been fun, man. Always is, Nate. Until next time, have yourself a good one. Will do. Will do. I'll be back in to close things up here in just a minute. Thanks again to Matt Sheehan for joining us here on the show. Always fun to talk to Matt about whatever's going on in the Big Ten. And a reminder, as always, thank you for making us your first listen every single weekday, at least three times a week here during the offseason. As always, follow us wherever it is you're listening to the podcast right now. If you like watching the podcast, you can do so on YouTube. It's Locked On Big Ten, Locked On Big One Zero on YouTube and wherever you find your podcasts. Of course, be sure to give us a subscription and a follow or whatever it is on whatever platform it is that you're consuming. The content really does help us out here over at Locked On a whole lot. Let's get into some news here before we leave for the day. Not a whole lot going on as far as big, big 10 news. We talked about a lot of it with Matt, but uh, Pat Narduzzi actually did uh, speak again since the last time we talked 
to him. More on that in just a second. In other Big Ten news, news of players leaving the Big Ten. Big Ten softball and Michigan softballs. Hannah Carson, a second-team All-Big Ten selection behind the plate last season, is now headed to the SEC. She'll be joining the LSU Tigers on their softball roster for the next season. In other news, Big Ten Media Days next week on Tuesday and Wednesday. We talked to Jacob Root about it yesterday. And the schedule for coaches is out. It's going to be 15-minute chunks with individual coaches. Last time slots of the day, in case things go over, are for the most interesting candidates. Day one will end with Michigan's Jim Harbaugh. Day two, you may have guessed it, will end with Ohio State's Ryan Day. So that's... A least a little bit of a look at the schedule if you want to know when your specific coach is speaking his 15 minute time slot available online with all the others and finally i mentioned pat narduzzi speaking up yet again and not exactly apologizing for what he said yesterday but but i'll just read the exact quote of course he got some backlash after the comments we mentioned with matt on michigan state and the big 10 he said Quote, how about the teams that are getting better? I think Pittsburgh is getting better, so we'll start there again. Anytime you get, and then he said, I've coached in the Big Ten for eight years, so I know it. I don't know the SEC, so I'm not going to claim I've never coached in the SEC, but I do know the Big Ten. I feel very confident, and again, it's not being arrogant. It's just kind of knowing the landscape and knowing what we played against in the Peach Bowl just would have liked to have our backup quarterback play the whole game. So... Again, on three where this is reported said, continuing Narduzzi believes he's not disrespecting the Big Ten or Mel Tucker's squad. He's just that confident in Pittsburgh and the ACC. He said, quote, there's no disrespect to the Big Ten or Michigan State. It's just about Pitt and about the ACC. Again, that's all I can tell you. I think ACC football is really, really good. And that's really the comment there that I was trying to get across. I understand this is the time to promote ACC football and pit football at the ACC media days. Just seems really, really weird that such a clear shot at Michigan State in the Big Ten was taken there by a former, again, former Big Ten assistant coach in Pat Narduzzi. I, again, he probably didn't mean it as such a direct shot at the Big Ten, but uh, there's definitely something there. And he... Definitely did not backpedal all the way in the comments made later this afternoon after what he said yesterday. So I think maybe still a little bit of saltiness from Pat Narduzzi. And uh, to be quite honest, I'm not convinced by the statements made earlier today that he thinks any differently than he did when he made those harsh statements on Wednesday. But again, whatever it is that Narduzzi has wrong with the Big Ten and Michigan State... Something tells me that they'll have a chance to at least rectify or prove what they said. And uh, we know Big Ten schools are going to remember the things that he said when those games do come around. Uh, No Big Ten teams on the non-conference schedule, by the way, this season for Pitt. Again, that's Locked On Big Ten for the day. Thanks again to Matt Sheehan for joining us on the program to talk about everything going on in the Big Ten. I'll be back tomorrow to do more of the same and wrap up the week. Again, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts at Locked On Big Ten. It's Locked On Big One Zero on podcasts, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, on Twitter too, at Locked On Big One Zero. I'm at Nate with Sports. Until tomorrow, this has been Locked On Big Ten.